Welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm David Pavey. In the winter of 1957, as a 19-year-old student, I was able to visit Niagara Falls for the first time and see the raging cataract from the Canadian side. This brought back to me a legendary story which has been recorded in the Smithsonian Magazine and other contemporary sources. The story concerns Jean-Francois Gravelet, who was born in 1824 near Dunkirk in France. Thanks to his blonde hair, Gravelet took on the name of Charles Blondin, or Charles Blondin in English. At 31 years of age, an expert tightrope walker, Blondin moved to the USA, where he soon conceived the idea of traversing Niagara Falls on a tightrope, which had never been done before. In due course, a rope 1,300 feet long, two inches in diameter, made of hemp, was strung across the falls. It would be the only thing separating him from the raging waters below, as he always worked without a net, believing that preparing for disaster only made a disaster more likely to occur. He never had life insurance, joking that no insurance company would take the risk. On the morning of June 30th, 1859, about 25,000 thrill-seekers arrived by train and steamer and dispersed along the American and Canadian sides of the falls. Both banks swarmed with spectators, among them statesmen and judges and clerics, and generals, members of Congress, artists, reporters, professors, salesmen, and hucksters. Shortly before 5 p.m., Blondin took his position by the American side, wearing fine, soft-soled leather shoes and holding a balancing pole made of ash, 26 feet long and weighing nearly 50 pounds. Slowly, calmly, he started to walk. Children clung to their mother's legs. Women peeked from behind their parasols. Several onlookers fainted. And about a third of the way across, Blondin shocked the crowd by sitting down on his cable and calling for the maid of the mist, the famed tourist boat, to anchor momentarily beneath him. He cast down a line and hauled up a bottle of wine, being French drank and started off again, breaking into a run after he passed the sagging center to set foot in Canada. After 20 minutes of rest, the great Blondin began the journey back to the American side, where he immediately announced an encore performance to take place on the 4th of July. On that day, Blondin appeared at the American end of the cable, this time without his balancing pole. Halfway across, he lay down on the cable, flipped himself over, and began walking backward to the Canadian side. On the journey back, he wore a sack over his body, depriving himself of sight. Wanden announced subsequent crossings, promising that each one would be more daring than the last. On July the 15th, with President Millard Fillmore in attendance, Blondin walked backwards to Canada and returned to the U.S. pushing a wheelbarrow. Two weeks later, he somersaulted and backflipped his way across, occasionally pausing to dangle from the cable by one hand. In August 1859, he made another crossing and after a brief rest, appeared on the Canadian end of the cable with the manager, Harry Colcord, clinging to his back. In his most famous exploit, he carried a stove and utensils on his back, walked to the center of the cable, started a fire, cooked an omelet. And when it was ready, he lowered the breakfast to passengers on the deck of the Maid of the Mist below. By the time he gave his final performance in 1896, it was estimated that Blondin had crossed Niagara Falls 300 times on his rope. The following year, he died in England of complications from diabetes, almost 73 years of age. 
But it's the crossing with the wheelbarrow that is perhaps the most celebrated of his performances, because once Blondin had shown he could do it, he addressed his audience. Do you believe I can carry a person across in this wheelbarrow? The crowd enthusiastically yelled, yes, we believe. Okay, said Blondin, who wants to get into the wheelbarrow? Nobody volunteered. Most people believe God exists. The Bible claims that only the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Many also believe in a general way that God sent Jesus to save us from the consequences of our sins by his substitutionary death. But how many have climbed into that metaphorical wheelbarrow, trusting their life and future entirely to Jesus? He's carried many people safely across the Great Divide and never lost anyone. The one who said, I am the way, calls us to repent of our failure, accept his sacrifice on the cross as a gift, and then enjoy the ride through life in his company until we reach the other side. I'm on board. I hope you are too. And thank you for tuning in once again to Village Church Connections.